So you're wanting to launch your first Google Shopping campaign and you wanna know how exactly to do that. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to launch your first Google Shopping campaign, how to go through all the settings and what best practices to keep in mind so that you can get the best possible results when launching your first campaign. So excited to get into this, but if you're new around here, my name is Blake Bauer and I run a digital advertising agency called Jetstream Digital and we help brands grow and scale with paid advertising. So if you want help doing this, setting this up and getting great results with advertising overall, and you have a business that want, you know, you want to get started with ads, um, you can check the links in the description and apply to work with me and my team. And I'll be happy to jump on a call with you and speak to you there. Now, before we get into the video, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the latest content. And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in and let me show you how to set this up. Okay, so now we're in the Google Ad account. And before we can actually create a Google Shopping campaign and effectively go through all the steps, we need to have a couple preliminary things in place already. So I have other videos on the channel, but what we're gonna need to do is actually have a product catalog and have that connected to the Merchant Center and have the Merchant Center connected to the Google Ad account, right? So I, I have a video on this for Shopify, how you can set up your Google uh, Shopping account, right? Uh, your Google uh, plugin and integration here, how you can actually set up the Google Merchant Center and integrate that with Shopify, and then essentially upload your products, connect Google Analytics 4 and your tracking, and everything that you're gonna need to do to upload your products and your product feed so that we can actually run Google Shopping ads, right? So I did wanna just mention that you do need to have all those other steps set up. Again, I'll leave some, uh, some links in the description where you can check out those other videos, but I'm assuming you have all that set up already. So this is just gonna cover how to set up Google Shopping campaign once you already have the catalog and everything set up. So again, back in the Google ad account, what we're gonna do now is just click on new campaign here. And we're gonna have a couple of different campaign options here. So we have sales, we have leads, we have website traffic, product and brand consideration, brand awareness and reach, et cetera, et cetera. Now for a shopping campaign, pretty self-explanatory, but in general, we're probably gonna to try to optimize for sales. You know, these are products that we're selling if you're running a shopping campaign. Um, we're wanting to get people to definitely buy things, right? Typically online. So you're gonna to wanna to select the sales objective, um, you know, 99% of the time, right? We typically always run sales as well. There might be other cases for a shopping campaign where you might wanna create one without a goal for guidance, but in this case, we're just gonna select sales. And then again, I mentioned this in the other video, but I have another video where I explain how to set up conversion events using Google Analytics 4 for Shopify. Um, and for other website uh, as well. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you have those goals already set up. And you can see here, we have the settings for purchases, which we wanna optimize around obviously, and make sure we're tracking purchases and we're able to actually have Google optimize the bids around us getting sales. So again, you're gonna wanna make sure that's already set up and then click on continue. And then you're gonna have a couple of different options here, right? You can select a search campaign, performance max, display, shopping, video, or discovery, right? So pretty self-explanatory, but we're gonna be selecting shopping in this particular case. And then you can see, I already have the Merchant Center connected to this Google Ad account. So it automatically pulls in this actual Merchant Center account to use this feed, right? So advertise the products on your website, select a Merchant Center account. So again, we already have that selected. And then we're gonna have two options here as far as the types of campaigns we can create. We can do a performance max campaign or we can do a standard shopping campaign. Now. I'll create an entire video about how to create a performance max campaign because what it essentially does is it pulls in and uses search and display and shopping and all the campaign types and it just bundles them all into one campaign to get the maximum performance. Uh, not a campaign that I'm particularly fond of in all cases. It can be very good, but in this video, I'm not gonna show you how to set up a performance max campaign. Again, I'll create that in another video. So we're gonna wanna set up a standard shopping campaign. And what this enables us to do is pick your products our bid strategy, our budget, and our targeting, right? A little bit more selectively, which is good. And then you can show your ads again on the Google you know, search network and the shopping network and everything. So uh, we have that selected and then let's go continue here. Okay, so now that we have set up, the first thing that we wanna do is enter a campaign name. Now you can't really go wrong with this, but you do wanna just essentially name it so it identifies what the campaign is and what you're doing with it, especially if you're creating multiple shopping uh, campaigns, you know, you wanna have some differentiators for them. So. For this, what I typically would do would just be a uh, standard shopping. So I'm just gonna go uh, S shopping, right? Standard shopping, right? And then maybe a product differentiator. So I'm gonna go like shoes, right? And then I'm gonna go uh, JS. So just for Jetstream, um, you can do an identifier for yourself. If you have multiple people in the ad account that might create ads, you might want to identify that as well. So I'm just gonna do that. And then you can also add in the country as well. It's something I'll typically add around here. So I'll go Canada, right? And I'll go shoes JS. So you can just do something like that, pretty simple. You can also, you know, add in 
uh, these kind of brackets here, right? So another kind of popular format. So I'll leave it like that. If you go to additional settings here, you can see no filters, advertise all products in the country of sale, which is recommended, or you can actually add filters. So this is great. Again, if we want to just advertise shoes, our entire product feed is currently being used, but say we want to actually just advertise shoes, we can go filter and then we can select based on some of these actual identifiers here. So um, in general, maybe you have a product category. So if we look at this here, we can see, right, we don't have any of our products currently categorized, but if we did, we could essentially go, you know, let's do all electronics and have that actually as the category, or we could do, you know, again, all sporting goods, right? So that's one thing we could do. Another thing is the condition. So um, in general, all your products are gonna be new, but maybe you have some reviews that you wanna you know, just advertise or you wanna just, you have some refurbished and you wanna separate those, you can do that as well. And in general, what you can do as well is the product type is probably the most useful. Again, where you can have some uh, separators for that, where you can label it as, you know, what the actual product is. So again, shoes versus pants versus like a shirt, right? That's where you can actually select that and create some campaigns specifically for like product ranges and product types, you know, for genders specifically as well, very, very useful. And I would recommend doing that so you can get a better baseline for like what lines of product are actually doing the best for your business. Uh, lastly, you also have some custom tags here. So again, this is very useful for actually creating and using filters to select specific products to use. So again, you can use a custom filter and then you could enter, you know, uh, shoes or something like that, right? So we, we currently don't have any, right? But if we did, we could add that in there and then boom, that would, essentially go there and then we could add in another one as well if you wanted to to fur further narrow that down i'm just gonna go no filter though uh, you can also select local products so um, if you have products for like a local store um, then this is the option where you can do that and you can turn that on i've never really messed around with this too much but uh you do the option there so you can learn more about how to do that uh, there as well and then you also have campaign url options if you want to add in utms here in different tracking we add this in sometimes so you can do that here um, and you can also find some you know just do some searches around here you can figure out how to set this up uh, there's kind of best practices around this that we would do as well so next is we're going to move on here to the bidding so there's a couple different options for bidding you have manual ct and then you can do some automated bidding strategies which would be a target roas or a maximize clicks so as far as a manual cpc goes what this would look like is we essentially, it's, it's as it says, right? It's helping increase conversions with enhanced CPC, right? So you can, this is a kind, of, kind of a whole description here. We still, you know, we can select, we want to optimize for conversions or conversion value, right? So this is the one that Google is obviously pushing for a little bit more, is trying to get started with a manual CPC. However, I actually typically don't use manual CPC when starting out. I like the option of actually maximizing clicks right out of the gate. So I can get an idea for how many, you know, actual volume there is for our keywords and start to get an idea as far as are we making sales what should our target ROAS be what can we expect as far as a, a cost per click goes and then I can start to set the CPC after that so typically I'll do something like this where then I'll set uh, or I won't set a max cost per click bid limit I'll just go maximize clicks um, and again, I might switch to a target ROAS model later on once I've collected enough data with this campaign to know what our target ROAS should be based on our break even and based on our targets and what's reasonable and then setting that target ROAS. In general, you don't wanna start out with a target ROAS bid strategy because you don't really know what to expect and neither does Google as far as like how, how well your website converts, what the conversion rate you know is gonna be and, and what the actual ROAS is probably gonna be, right? So if you set a two ROAS, right, it's unlikely for it to actually spend. Um, and you're just really gonna have, you know, Google's really not gonna spend anything because it doesn't think it can hit your goal. So it's good to use those other things to get a baseline and then you can set the target ROAS and scale your budgets with a target ROAS, trying to keep that same kind of target in mind. But again, when starting out, just using uh, maximize clicks or, or manual CPC uh, is a good strategy there. So I'm just gonna go maximize clicks. And then for the budget, again, pretty simple, pretty straightforward here. This is where you just wanna set something that you're comfortable with. Um, there's not really a set limit here. Uh, it's, you know, realistically, you're gonna be experimenting when you're first launching this campaign to see how it's gonna perform. So launching with something, you know, in the neighborhood of about $30 to $50, $100, $200, $300, depending on the, how big of an area you were targeting, right? Anything around that's gonna be pretty good. Um, so in this case, I'll just go $100. Right, and we'll just see how that performs. And again, you do want to give it enough data to, to work with, right? If if you have a two hundred dollar product and you're spending, you know, uh, thirty dollars a day, right? It's going to take you a while to get enough data back to see if it's actually profitable. Because you could spend for an entire week and then you make one sale and now you're out of one ROAS, right? Versus if you have a two hundred dollar product and you're spending two hundred dollars a day, you're going to get data a lot quicker back and get a good idea for where your target ROAS should be a lot faster. So 
setting that $200 a day, as far as campaign priority goes, um, I typically just leave this on low, um, but you can, you know, mess around with this a little bit more. If you have more than one shopping campaign, then you can select essentially which one you want to have more priority. So if you only have one shopping campaign, then selecting low is good for this. If you have more than one, then maybe selecting medium or high to push for these other ones is also good. A side note as well, if you have a performance max campaign, you will see the performance max campaign gets the highest priority and it typically pulls budget and spend and results away from all of your other campaigns and just pulls them all in the performance max, right? So something to keep in mind there. Now, as far as targeting goes, what we can do is we have the search network here and I typically leave this on, including Google search partners. However, you can turn this off if you don't want to advertise to other partners you just wanna show on Google. Um, but again, let's leave this on. Uh, as far as devices go, you're gonna be shown on all eligible devices. Location targeting, pretty straightforward, but you can add in more specific locations if you want. So again, you can add in a postal code, a city, a region, or a country. So again, if you wanted to do like United States, we could add that in and we could do Canada as well, right? Now, something to note here as well, the Merchant Center does have different uh, rules and selections around where you can actually advertise and bid. So you need to expand your Merchant Center feed to include multiple different countries if you're wanting to use shopping in different countries, right? Because there's different regulations. So I'll just leave it at Canada for now. And then you also have the option here to go presence or interested in. So people in regularly in who have shown interest in your target location. So it's gonna recommend you this, but if you are only wanting to sell to people who live in Canada, right? You know, because you only ship there, for example, then selecting presence makes the most sense, right? You just want to select people who are in or regularly in Canada in this particular example. So it's something to keep in mind. I would definitely recommend switching that over, uh, but you can leave this open if you're not super picky about where you're wanting to target and where you wanted to ship to. But again, I would recommend doing that just again with shipping options and prices and stuff makes more sense. Now you have your start date, which again, I would just select today, but if you had a different start date, you could select that as well. And then you could also select an end date. I typically don't select end dates. I'll just work on daily budgets and just trying to get a baseline and see if this campaign is gonna work. If it's gonna be profitable, trying to test and iterate uh, instead of selecting an end date. But if you do have a specific campaign or an offer that you're wanting to run only for a couple months or a couple weeks, then you could add an end date in there and easily manage that and select you know, your budget based on that. Now, the last thing here is to create an ad group. Uh, and so again, you could label this based on the products. So I could just do like white shoes, for example, as the ad group, and then I'm gonna go create campaign here. Awesome. So. You can see now I have created a campaign. It was that simple. Um, it's yeah, they make it really, really easy to launch your ads. You really don't have to create any ads. It just takes your merchant center feed and it and it shows those across the internet, right? So it's pretty simple. A lot of the setup is involved in the merchant center and actually connecting the feed to the to your store and setting up everything in the back end of your website for your product feed. That's where the heavy lifting is because it takes the description from that merchant center feed as well to create the campaign. Um, and then as far as executing this in the Google ad account, as you can see, very, very simple, very straightforward. And now your campaign is live here. So um, you can let this run and typically Google's gonna optimize this, trying to get you the best results possible, the best return if you have those conversion events set up and it knows you're trying to optimize for sales. Another thing you can do here is you can narrow this down a little bit further. So you can add a subdivision here, All right? So we currently don't have anything here, but you could actually narrow this down a little bit further. Um, you know, based on some of these different uh, divisions here, right? You can actually change this here uh, for the cost per click. So what you can actually do on this level too, say you didn't want to filter it down at the actual campaign setup level, and now you want to filter out to only advertise specific products. Maybe you only have a couple that you want to advertise and you want to exclude some other ones. You could actually go into here and then just select on add subdivision here. And then in our case, we don't have currently have a category set up or uh, a custom label set up, but we do have item IDs and we can look at each of these individual item IDs here. And then what we can actually do is say, we just wanna advertise the shoes here. We don't wanna advertise this vintage cap. What we could do is just select all these shoes here. And this is a little bit of a tedious process, but you can see all, all these different like shoe sizes is pretty much the only difference. There's just like 14 different variants or whatever. So then we'll go ahead and click continue to edit the bids. Right, and then as far as this, you can actually set your uh, your your bids here. Right, this is going to be automatic, so I'm just going to leave this. Uh, but you can actually set your bids per product, which can be very useful if you know you have a couple products that you know you want to optimize around. You can start to get really specific and granular with this to better optimize. So we can go save on that. So now we can see all these products are here and this gives you a much better visibility too, as far as like which products are actually performing best, which are getting the most impressions, which are getting the most clicks, all that good stuff. You can actually go into here too and add, let's say let's add this corduroy cap here. 
let's save that. And then let's actually exclude right everything else. Say you had a bunch of other products that you didn't want to run, you can exclude everything else. And then say we wanted to, you know, not run this vintage corduroy cap as well. We can exclude that. So now we only have the shoes running, um, and that campaign is set up the same as if you used a filter. Uh, and again, you can see visibility into all of the products here really easily and see how each are performing, right? How much cost per conversion is, what the conversion rate is, right? You can even add in metrics related to like ROAS and things like that. Now, if you navigate back here, you can see the overview of how your campaign is doing. You can see some recommendations of how to improve your campaign. There typically won't be a ton here, but uh, there will be some recommendations there. You can look at the uh, actual ad itself. Again, there's not gonna be anything crazy here because you can't really control like how the ads look or anything like that, but it is under review here. You can look at the product groups, which is what we were just in. You can look at the actual products themselves right here and look at all of them, how they're gonna display, what the actual link is to the item ID and everything like that, what the price is, all that good stuff. Again, this is connected and pulled from your merchant center. Um, you can look at some of the keywords. Um, this is just for negative keywords though. So if Google will essentially bid on your product, right? So whatever your product's keywords are, right? So things related to your product's keywords, Google is gonna try to bid and essentially use a broad match based on your description for your product to try to serve ads to the people that are searching for things related to your products, right? So if you know what some more negative keywords are that you know for sure you don't want this campaign to be bidding on, I would highly recommend you to add in some negative keywords and start to build this list out. And you will actually get some insights related to what keywords this campaign is bidding on. So you can start to narrow this down and get more specific with what you're actually bidding on. You also have audiences as well. So you can add in some audience segments here. We typically don't mess with this too much, but if you know you only wanna target women, for example, this can be a great way to do that. Um, you can do that at the campaign level or at the uh, audience level. Uh, and then you can also add in some things here, right? Like you can add in parental status, marital status, right? Tons of different things that you can add in here. Um, and so this is a way that you can further narrow this campaign down to get better results if you know what your ICP or your uh, ideal customer persona looks like and who you're looking to target. You can add that in there as well. And that is pretty much everything related to how to set up a shopping campaign, your first shopping campaign and how to get great results. Again, very simple and straightforward setup. Hopefully uh, that all made sense. It can get a little bit technical as far as the filters and narrowing it down to the specific product ranges, but um, that is pretty much the overview for how to set up your first Google Shopping campaign. I hope you found that video valuable and I'm excited to see you get great results with Google Shopping ads and set everything up for yourself. Uh, if you did enjoy the video, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button as well and leave me a comment letting me know what you thought. And if you have any questions or any issues with this, let me know in the comments as well and I'm happy to get back to you there. For a bunch of other tutorials and helpful videos around digital marketing and advertising, I encourage you to go to my channel and check out all the other content I have there. Uh, tons of valuable resources there um, for you to just learn about digital marketing and how to get success overall with ads. Until the next one though, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.